There are many strategies used by handlers to manipulate and to resist accountability here. These strategies can be overt and they can be nuanced or they can be covert and covert handling is always harder to spot. And there are lots of deceitful templates here. Now it gets way more tricky when you are dealing with the alters in others that can be really distracting. They can, you know, the alters are used for extreme self-deception and to reinforce the, these self-deceiving aspects within ourselves. And in others, they can be extremely convincing in the stories they're going to share with us and the stories they so believe in. A lot of these, these alters can be spot with these extremely people-pleasing habits within us, within others. You can also trace it on the face. You have some patterns. You can see sometimes as you train yourself in reading frequency signature and as you denumb your clear abilities, you're going to be able to see them more and more, to perceive them. You can also perceive them in a voice. You can see them going across the face. You can see the face of the person changing. You can see it in photos sometimes. So you can spot a, a lot of different things going on with alters and other people around you being in alters. You're gonna have a special, a special appearance that is not the true core spirit you're going to see an alteration in the way they look. This alter can look with different characteristics like a prankster gaze or a lustful overlay, a very checked out, people pleasing, blissed out look you will see many different things. It expressed in many different ways. And it's extremely tricky with different handlers around us because if, as they are real, they have alters. We all have alters. Everyone who is real here have alters, whether they know it or not yet. <laughs> but you're building your bond with that person on false programmed personalities. So this is not the true core spirit. And it gets real tricky with alters here because their signatures are way more complex to read than pretty much any anything else here. So it can take pretty long time to get to the root and trace back the signature you know, and deprogram as it goes, you know, what's been happening that you've been fooled and deceived by other people's alters. And alters are so strong that generally the person being an alter really believe their reality to be true through the lens of these alters. Real people here who are often in their altars will often use love bombing techniques to hook into you, your field. You know, it's the kind of flattery. And it generally is rushing your natural process. It's speeding up the way you are building trust. It's almost like it's being forced a little bit on you because you're being confused about the nature of what's going on. You know, you've been love bombed so much. So it creates, it can create a, a quick intimacy where you really quickly trust this person. You believe this person is an ally of yours. And something I've been noticing is that there is a lot of deep mind control 
in a lot of mainstream fields, you know, like low old field links linked to mainstream health, whether it's for humans, for animals, uh, you know, the UN, everybody working there is under pretty severe mind control as well. So you're going to find a lot of programming when dealing with these beings. Now it depends. Are they real? Are they unspirited? The unspirited will definitely be used against you if they are part of this field. Then if it's a real person, it really depends who you're dealing with. And these altars are there to generally, I mean, if you're quite skilled at navigating different kind of traps in your life, altars are really tricky in others, in ourselves as well, but in others too. Because beings who are in altar, like a little bit, maybe more and more, I mean, it's going to change, you know, it's an expression. There are many altars, so how many are expressing simultaneously? And how, how strongly are they expressing? Is it 10%? Is it more? How is the person overtaken? It's going to, by their own altars, it's going to vary, you know, from one moment to the next. And it can really get worse quickly. You know, you can have beings doing their shadow work, they keeping, you know, triggers at bay. This is a great way to limit alter triggering. And then, you know, in your life, if you, if you let your guard down, you can easily be infiltrated in your, in your inner circles. And if you let beings who are being reprogrammed too close to you, you also, you know, putting yourself at risk. You're going to feel it because triggers are going to increase in your relationship with them. It's almost going to be every time, every time you're having an exchange with these beings, you, you're receiving a trigger. You can spot it in the signatures. If they are writing to you or it's exchanging with you, they will start to make less and less sense because they are drifting away in their own delusion. And their altars are going to be sent because it's cabal led and cabal controlled, meaning dark force and held by these dark forces who have association with evil kind of forces in this realm, you know. So these altars can be triggering programming subtly or not so subtly. There are, you know, direct triggers that you can feel, but they are, there is also, I mean, with the more skilled handlers, like triggering programming where you don't feel it but it's a cross of your boundaries in us that is going to trigger programming or things like that. Or it's going to target your core wounds and trying to get yourself to react and you find yourself having strange behaviors with these people because you're getting frustrated by basically their altered nonsense. <laughs> All of this is meant to keep us in very distracting loops away from the beings who are really benefiting us, who are really gonna be the ones where we can build something really strong and meaningful. You have a lot of deception that is encouraging secrecy. So secrecy programming is you know, you're not going to tell, you know, you're going to keep some aspect secret because of the handling of something going on. So you're not going to talk about it. You know, you're not going to be open about it. This is 
or secrecy programming that I sometimes find in traces. Now, handlers are generally absolutely not conscious of how they are being used. They are there, there, and them and their alters are telling themselves stories about the things they choose to do. And these are cover stories. These are false reality living fields that are absolutely not the truth. It's the, the surface kind of appearance in this realm. And, you know, you have to dig way deeper to touch the real reality of what's really happening here. And that's how we build false memories with handlers, you know, believing the false reality living field, believing it to be true until you realize, you know, you, you're going to reach that point where you're going to break your mind control and it just all collapses and it's like a castle of cards. And suddenly you're faced with the real reality living field. And that's another story. So that's showing us how a lot of our choices are pre-programmed. We are made to bound with our elders to believe they are our allies or our mentors. And actually with time and working on deep deprogramming, we realize that a lot of what is in our lives is based on exactly that engineering, artificial, alien, controlled engineering. And you often find this dynamic between endlers and endlies. You can see it all around. You can see it in your life. You can see it in your past. You can see it in the lives of other real beings around you. It's everywhere. And there is very little that is seated in truth. So the characters around us get replaced by new propositions Are we, as we are turning, you know, the older propositions down. And endlers generally target your sense of identity. You know, in my past, it was more with nicknames or objectifying me. But they can also do, they can also trigger that sense of identity by triggering your programming, your wounded healer archetype, for example, your wound of non-recognition and get you out of your center through that. Now, love bombing is a lot about flattery. You're going to feel that it's not entirely true in the frequency it holds. And flattery or love bombing just is an exaggeration or something the authors are saying. Sometimes, you know, Handlers around us say what they psychically can tune to, you know, they know it's what we want to hear or they think that's the way to validate us. But somehow in the signature, you will be able to pick it up. Maybe not straight ahead with extremely skilled and psychic handlers, but at some point you will and it will again all collapse. Love bombing does trigger your self-esteem if you really tune to it. Like maybe not the first time, but if it's repeated, repeated, repeated. You're going to feel a gap between what this person telling you, how they appreciate you and their actions and behaviors and choices. After that, the story get distorted because you might feel you might be left feeling guilty because 
this person often in alters is sending you repetitive triggers and it kind of gets you out of your center. You might lose your patience or not communicate in a way where you usually do, you know, from your core center. It's because it's this manipulative technique that do spin you around, they disorient you. And you can ask yourself what is happening in your reality with others around you as you are more and more asserting yourself. Now, something difficult here is to push away a NPC handler or also a spirited handler who pretend they love you. For the spirit, for the NPC person, they are programmed to, to believe they love you. So it's like this synthetic love, but you know they don't love you because of how they behave, how they act, what effect they have on your psyche. It's because the spiritless are given these backstories that make them appear so convincing here. They have their, or their identities organized around these cornerstones, these backstories. And it's a story created for us, the real, to keep us where we are. And now the behaviors of the spiritless are adapted depending on our progresses. And many times our progresses are being erased. So the behaviors of the sims and backdrops are adjusted. They can become a little bit more aggressive here and there. That's where you get, that's what you get in, you know, hotspots that are, you know, heavier on gang stalking. You get more aggressive, <laughs> spiritless templates. And, you know, spiritless beings, they're never going to realize what they are doing to us, the reals. And most of the spirited handlers here also don't realize how they are being used as handlers towards others. And that is a cover on top of, you know, what is really going on here. Now you also with alters, you can find false compassion template and false humility carried by these altars. And compassion without truth is also a product of deception. And it's interesting to keep on observing, you know, if we feel obligated, if we feel ourselves a false loyalty to others due to a programming being triggered or active. Now, many times I don't confront endlers around me. But if we do confront them, what we will encounter very often is going to be denial. Or they're going to find excuses. Or they're going to be diverting the attention away from themselves. The excuses are maybe acknowledging that something wrong has been occurring, but it does shift the blame and the responsibility. So you're always going to notice how you feel when you receive an excuse, when you're facing an excuse. And learners generally don't like to be confronted. You have to really work on your ego to be able to take a few steps back and, you know, think about what's going on and kind of reflect on it. And it can sometimes help you to break your programming down about, you know, what's really, what's, what's going on in your reality. How people are handling confrontation is really a window 
of someone's character. You will sometimes find with the dark reels, I found that sometimes, um, you know, concessions. I'm sorry you feel that way, for example. Generally, you're not going to feel great when, when reading that. And it's a, it's a very clumsy way to try to, you know, reconnect with someone. Generally, if you have to analyze an apology to look whether it's sincere or not, it's probably not. Another manipulative technique is when, you know, you receive an apology that is asking for your sympathy, it's displacing the pain of the wounded with the pain of the wounder, right? That's pretty common as well. You have a lot of distortion here going on with handlers placing themselves in the place of the victim while they were the handlers. And, you know, you just push them away because they are going the outer road and it's not so pretty and it doesn't look so very sane out there. So, you know, you have to part ways whether if it's getting, getting worse for people around you or if you realize that it was the root of what was happening. A true bound is when you know you're acknowledging the truth instead of holding to the illusion. It's when you are ex escaping the sphere, the sphere of guilt and obligation, when you have and you can connect to real empathy when you don't fall for false humility and the false empathy from alters. That can also trigger your savior programming, by the way. Here we are very programmed not to see, not to even be, be able to locate ourselves. That's from the MK Ultra programs. A lot of us had, I mean, all of us had to Take it from, you know, level one and start with the basic of basic in terms of boundaries because they 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 had been so heavily violated all of our lives. Even if you you know, some are did worse here than others, but you can find the same programming everywhere, where you know a lot of us could not locate ourselves. Like where do we begin? you know, primary needs like the thirst and hunger, you know, going to the toilet, different things like that. So that's the path, right? I mean, we, we had to do it step after step, doing extra years and error and experimentation, trying this this time and making progress with our boundaries because then we are a less easy prey out there in the simulation and in the game and you you learn it's like you learn to avoid eye, eye contact with the spiritless because that's the way they engage conversation with you you know i just pass and even if you know you have to fight your politeness programming in order not to do that but spiritless always find a way to suddenly cross your boundaries i mean all the simulation kicking in is just all the time, a subtle boundary crossing, you know, it's small things sometimes, but it's like not entirely like, yeah, you don't like it. It's not that it triggers you greatly, but it's like, you don't like it that these spiritless be beings, you know, they, they're just too close from you or they just, um, you know, smell your medicinal plant and you know, already the fact that they allow themselves to touch it is already crossing your boundaries or things like that, you know. So here it's all about breaking free from our programming. You know, you find a little flow, the entry point where the castle of cards is gonna, you know, surrender. And step after step, we know more what is us, 
and what is programmed in our codes and what is the true us. And as soon as you modify your reality here, you know, there is a little tweaking as well. You know, basically the programs know you're, you're going out of your loop, right? Where you kept with different handlers around you and your own programming, your own alters and so on. And when you're breaking free, the program always sent you like new handlers with a new templates, new role they're gonna play, right? You haven't visited, revisited this, this specific dynamic that you're gonna visit with them. It's all the time that different, right? Because especially all the reels are different. So it's very unique, their handling style. You know, you have hundreds of templates here, thousands probably. So when we're breaking free from our loops, we're breaking free from some program behaviors in us, in some program decisions, some program choices. The programs, of course, don't want us to go off script. And you go off script when you really go beyond the surface, the surface levels of the pretenses here. In most of the choice that we are making from a program part within ourselves, they are as per, per our codes and per our programming. So from there, we can only express a smaller version of what we can be here. That's exactly the point of all this programming is to keep, keep us smaller than we are and playing much smaller than we really can. So we're here in this realm and we keep on playing the game, especially after this period that is coming to a closure with the intensity of it and the shadow aspects and the speedening in revelations and maybe crossroads that are happening or reunion, you know, if there is a common interest, a common cause to reunite around. So we know we have to deal with a lot of resistance here, a lot of counter energies, a lot of engineering. And it is truly about going through it as much as possible with eyes wide open as much as we can right now. It's always going to change. It's a constant evolution. And for that, you know, Olya has been recording different audio tracks of Deep Relaxation, Yoga Nidra. And these are great to break programming it's an excellent complementary tool to anything else we can be doing. And it's extremely empowering because with one recording, you are independent. You can work as much as you want with it. And every time it's a different journey because you are different. So these tools, I intend that my videos as well promotes clarity on the themes that as the reels here we are dealing with every day in our lives and some of them some of these you know manipulative methods are so covert so sneaky that we need we need a lot of self-confidence to really believe in what we know to be true. So with these bags of tools and you know all the ones that we have in store with us, all that we know to be true and our clear abilities, we keep on walking 
in integrating, you know, there's the big wave that we just been through, making, you know, the best out of it and building on the successes and learning from from how the engineering managed to hook into us and retrace it back. That's that's the best way to deprogram from anything. You just reflect and you naturally, you know, all of us are just breaking down, you know, breaking the programming down. For that, we need space. That's also why all the distraction is organized. We need time and we need to feel safe. That's also why you will be finding a lot of triggers targeting your survival. And well, you know, are you going to survive? Are you going to make it to the next month? Or that's also why they have built money the way they did here. It's always interesting to reflect on these mind games present in our lives and keep on speeding our pro processes by picking up the signatures and alters also have signatures you will feel that it's not the core being sometimes you will see it also it's 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 a programmed aspect and resist spending too much time in these engineered traps that are meant to keep us away from away and distracted from where we really need to be focusing on. You're only going to suffer if you believe the mirrored reality field, the false one. And if you stay strong in, you know, knowing what you what you are seeing, and you know, you come you can come back to it if you if you're being gaslit, or if you're tuning to psychically to the way others are reading what's happening you know, being very self-deceived by the outers as well. So you need to keep strong and bring yourself back to what you know to be true. And if you have evidence, you can go back looking at the evidence, you know, and reminding yourself that is why it could never work out. And so many times we dismiss the red flags or we don't read the full signatures because we really also want to believe to that new story of the game where it looks exciting, like exciting things might be birthed from that and have them near us just to remind ourselves of what's truly happening here.